Nothing will make your audience's eyes roll more than cliches in your short film. You see them everywhere. You see them on YouTube short films, the film festival circuit, although at the higher tier festivals, you see a lot less of the cliches. So I'm gonna go through what these cliches are. The first few I'm gonna break down just because I hate them so much. I wanna give you some alternative options that are a little more creative. And then at the end of the video, I'll throw out some rapid fire cliches. Now, even though I'm gonna be making fun of these cliches, don't feel bad if you've done it yourself. I think most of us have. I certainly have done most of the things on this list. Cliché number one, a car crash and or lots and lots of unrelenting grief. Even if you're doing a really bleak, sad story, you have to make it a little bit fun for the audience. Even the saddest films are still entertainment. They're offering something fun to the audience, whether that's action or thrills or scares or romance or laughs. You're getting something besides just tears and melancholy. So if your entire short film is about a character moping around and being sad, we get it. Death is sad, but you know what? Death can also be awkward. It can be a relief. It can be funny. And these unexpected reactions to death are much more interesting to explore than just plain old grief, both for yourself, the filmmaker, and for your audience. Okay, cliche number two. This one's such a cliche. It was almost a cliche to even put it on this list, and that is introducing a character by showing them waking up. Anybody who watches a lot of movies is probably gonna yawn or sigh when they see your character hit the alarm clock or throw it across the room or get up before the alarm clock, literally every possible iteration of waking up has been done before. If you need to introduce your character in the morning, what I highly recommend is that you just skip a little ahead in their day and start with them having a conflict with their barista, they got their drink wrong, or they're taking a shower but they're out of soap and they grab the dish soap, or they're trying to put on some pants but all their pants are too loose, they must have just lost a bunch of weight. You can tell us a lot about your character in a lot more original ways than showing them get out of bed. Better yet, just get straight into the conflict of the story and let us learn about your character as they deal with it. Just a couple more, then I'm gonna do some rapid fire cliches. Next cliche is super insidious because it makes everybody think they're a genius, they're the next M. Night Shyamalan, and that is the entire movie took place inside a character's head or it was a dream. If you're gonna do a film that takes place inside somebody's head, whether it's a dream or a mental breakdown or a drug-induced fantasy, just do me a favor and don't make it a twist at the end of the film, okay? It's not a twist, that is a cop-out because it means that you don't have to explain anything and all of the entire premise of your film was just fake. Nothing was actually happening, so why do we care? I had a dream last night that I rode a unicorn shaped like Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Who cares? And if this story's taking place in their head, there better be real world consequences for the things that happen in his or her head. I'm talking Freddy Krueger, he kills you in your dream, you're dead in real life. Another cliche, the briefcase full of money or the duffel bag full of money. Briefcase is a little worse because I mean, who even uses a briefcase anymore? Maybe I'm just an insulated filmmaker in Los Angeles, but does, do they even, do they make them? I don't know. I literally haven't seen a briefcase in real life in like 15 years. So maybe there's something else you can put your money in. Look, I made an entire feature based around a bag of money. Whoops, but I do think it's in your best interest to find maybe a more original uh, thing to carry the cash in. Like maybe if your character owns a cat like me, he could carry all the cash in a cat carrier just because it's what he had in his house. It's 2021, maybe it's all Bitcoin. It's all a little piece of paper. And really the crime genre is probably more rife with cliche than all of the other film genres combined. I would look at The Sopranos or Breaking Bad for really good examples of how good writers avoid all the cliches that are inherent with this genre. Okay, we got the slice of life film with really no point or perspective. Fade in, a laundromat, a woman arrives, she puts a load of clothes in. She tries to get cigarettes down the street, but they're out. Back to the laundromat. Artistic shots of clothes swirling in the machine. Back home, it's night now. She drinks cheap red wine and looks out at the city lights below. Finn. Here's the thing, if you want to do a slice of life film, it better be a very interesting life or a very rarely seen life or a life that has a new perspective or point of view that you're showcasing it with. If somebody did a slice of my life, I'd never get to the end of it. All right, this one's a favorite. The overly ambiguous ending. Now, I actually love ambiguous endings. When done right, they pose a question, they make the viewer think and formulate their own interpretation of what just happened or what is about to happen to these characters. Or an ambiguous ending is making a statement that, hey, it no longer matters what happened or is happening because they've moved past that central question that was driving most of the film. And usually when it's done right, ambiguity is a central theme of the movie from the jump. Think about Doubt, Inception, Blade Runner. All these movies feature ambiguity as a central idea of the film. But remember, even if 
your film is intentionally designed to be ambiguous, you as the filmmaker need to know what the reality of your story is. It should not be ambiguous to you. A good ending should feel both surprising and inevitable. If your story has nothing to do with ambiguity and you, the filmmaker, don't know the answers and use ambiguity to hide that, we all know. We see right through you. And it's annoying and it's cliche. Stop. All right, those were the big ones. Let's throw out some rapid fire cliches, right? Overuse of drone shots. We get it, you just got a drone. Doesn't mean that every other shot of your film should be a drone shot. A lot of films shouldn't have one drone shot. Okay, the looking in the mirror, who am I slash what have I done with my life moment. What a symbol. I don't know why I'm ripping that one up because I've done that a hundred times. Nice face. Thank you. When somebody's driving, they're a free spirit and they're doing that wavy hand thing in the wind out the window. Artistic tree or flower shots. It needs to be a reason to motivate cutting away to a random tree or flower. If you know any cliches that I haven't listed, definitely drop a comment below. Here's one I've never seen before. A dog or cat hating the evil character in the film. Wow. Bold and original. Uh, I'm just gonna say the word cigarettes especially when they're being smoked by people that are clearly non-smokers. I'm not even a smoker, but I can tell when an actor's a non-smoker. Going back to the crime genre, holding a gun to a character's head until they give you the answers. Seen it. Yes, holding a gun to a character's head is very effective, but maybe not the most original way of getting that information. Turning on the TV and catching that perfectly timed news broadcast that tells the character just what he or she needed to know in that moment. Very clever way to get some exposition across, that is. So now you know what not to do if you're making a short film. Watch this video to learn what you should do. It's an eight minute crash course on making your first short film, but if you've made a few, it'll probably still have some useful nuggets of info too. If you recognize any of these cliches, throw me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. I'm making videos to improve your storytelling every week. And the Roku screensaver's up, which means this video is done.